Welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about particle and free body diagram. So, a particle is a material body whose dimension is a negligible or infinitesimal, and uh, it's so small that ignoring its dimension doesn't bring any effect. The concept of particle is relative to whole system. Our planet is a very big object, but it is a particle relative to the size of galaxy or our universe. An atom, however, in atomic science or, or science that deals with very small particles, it isn't, isn't considered, considered to be a particle. So a body is considered to be a particle if its size is relatively small to other dimensions on a system. Particle has all mass concentrated at a point, so it is also called mass point. So there is not a lot of uh, explanation I need to give for a particle. Let's get into free body diagram. So free body diagram is a simple sketch showing all forces and moments on a system. And also free body diagram gives you general idea of the force system and helps understanding the state of the body. And it does not include the, the supports and structure of the body. So to create a free body diagram, we use a simple graphical notation of vector for forces. We use lines with arrowhead and draw the forces with reference to some arbitrary axes. So we create some axes and we draw the forces. And these forces are going to uh, represent the reaction forces or the forces that are acting on body directly or the forces that uh, the body uh, puts on some another body. So these for these are going to be forces, and if if there are some moments, we just use curved lines. L. Now let's take example of this system we have here, and here uh, two balls or two spares are inside a container, and uh, and the the spares are actually getting forces due to the container. Uh, the spares are going to have a, f a f weight downwards, and we are just going to show every possible force on those two balls uh, using free body diagram. Now, what I'm going to do, the first step for a free body diagram is we usually try to isolate a, a particular part of system which is pretty much independent in some sense. Let's just say a ball A is independent and I can explain every force on A uh, independently. Since uh, I've created uh, some arbitrary axes or two perpendicular lines that are uh, going, uh, whose uh, center is at the center of the spare, I'm just going to copy the, the, those two arbitrary axes and I suggest always draw those axes and they are going to help you understand the forces in a better manner. So this is x-axis and this is y-axis. Now the first force I'm going to pick another color. Now the first force on ball A is the weight which is downwards. So I'm just going to say this is the center of the ball and weight is downwards. So this is weight of A. The next force is the reaction force due to uh, the, the vessel or the, the, the container which is directly upwards. Let's say this is reaction one and this is weight and there is another force another reaction force due to the container at this point so this is going to be in this direction so this is R2 and since those two balls are, are touching each other and they are going to put force on one another or either of the ball is pushing another ball so we're just going to have a equal amount of force in both directions. So ball A is experiencing force due to ball B in this direction. So this is R3. This is pretty much the free body diagram for A. Now for better understanding many of the pe many people draw may draw this spare for, for um, or outline of the spare to actually understand the forces in better manner but I suggest ignoring that uh, that circular uh, outline just for, for sake of better uh, free body diagram. I just like without that outline. Let's do that for 
uh, for sine for ball B. I'd say these are two reference axes. So the first force which is acting is due to the container at this point. I'm just going to show this force like that which is R let's say it's R4 and the next force is on ball B due to A which is in this direction it's R R5 and it is actually equal to R3 so we could just name it as a common R A B common force that either of the ball is putting on another ball and there is a weight of ball B which is directly downwards and I can just show like that so this is weight of ball B which is downwards so this is a free body diagram so simply if you want to create a free body diagram always consider the weight of the body which is directly downwards and uh, and do not leave any reaction forces all of the reaction forces are important and uh, remove every support on the body now whenever you are solving numerical problems try making those free body diagrams these help a lot to understand the forces and uh, and uh, and chances are that you make very less mistakes while solving numerical problems and and these uh, diagrams uh, keep things neat and simple that's all in this video and thanks for watching.